So today we're making a significant shift in how we're programming. Up till now we've been using Scratch, which has let us drag and drop blocks into different locations, but that has a, made us avoid something called a syntax error. A syntax error is when you type in a command and the computer doesn't know what you mean, uh, and it, it throws a syntax error. So in Reborg, which is the environment we're about to look at, uh, you'll be able to start typing in the code instead of dragging and dropping. So if you are at this transitioning to text area in the textbook, hit the Explore Reborg environment. I'm just going to open that in a new tab. And when you get here, I'll just delete what I have. This is Reborg's world. And what we're going to do is we want to be able to run code. And all the code that we're going to write will be inside this Python code or library window. Uh, so when I want to run it, I click on the Run button. Right now, it says Last Instruction Completed because I haven't typed anything. Let's say that I told it to move, and because move is a function, I need brackets at the end of it. And now I click Run. Now my Reborg robot here, he will move forward by one unit. <coughs> and I can reset the world by hitting Reload right there. So if I to wanted to tell Reborg to move ahead a number of times, I could tell it to do that by either typing move, or I can click on this Reborg's keyboard and have a bunch of these commands available to me, and I can click on them uh, a number of times. So if I did that, I could have him move a number of times. In this case, I moved so many times that he crashed into a wall right here at the end. So if I get rid of a few of those, there we go. Now Reborg will finish the, the situation right there. So that will work out just fine. A couple of other things to note about Reborg. If you want it to step through one line at a time, you can do that by clicking on this step button. Then it will highlight which line of code is going to execute next. And you can step forward, or if you'd like, you can step backward through the code as well. And if you hit uh, play as per usual and then pause halfway through, then you can step backward or forward through the code as well at that point. Uh, one other thing that you'll want to know about is we can select different worlds. So in our tutorial, uh, if you think back to the tutorial here, let's say I was on step, I don't know, uh, five. Well, then in Reborg's world, I would just select step five right here, and 5A is there, and 5B is there. So we can select different worlds simply using that menu selector right there. Uh, and the last thing that you'll want to note is how to save your files. So each time you're finished a step, you'd want to save that. So this is just a text editor right here. And the way that I save it is to hit Control on my keyboard and then S. So I'm holding down Control and I hit S. And then I say, yes, I'd like to keep that file. Uh, and what will happen is if I open that up, it's just the code that I wrote just now, right there, just in a text editor. Uh, and so anytime you want to open that file, so let's say that I got rid of what's in there and I wanted to open up what I just did, I'd hold down Control or Command on a Mac and I'd hit O and then it's going to automatically save it as the name that we just uh, had in our in our menu selector so that was step zero I was on so it saved it as step zero I hit open and these values uh, these commands that I used will pop back up there